Salesforce holds lots of super valuable data, so things like account information, opportunity details, customer support cases, campaigns, and all of that data is super valuable, not only for the operational side of things within Salesforce, but actually also for analytical as well as AI use cases. And that's why many companies are interested in bringing that Salesforce data into their target data platforms such as Databricks. How to do that? Of course, you could go the low-level approach and directly use the Salesforce APIs, for example, to ingest the data, to code all of that logic, to also handle edge cases, to do this efficiently, to do this incrementally. But this is, first of all, super painful. It requires good engineers to build that reliable pipeline. And it also requires you to maintain all of that. A much easier way is to use a connector that is already abstracting all of that away for you, that is already built, performance optimized, handles all the edge cases, and also takes care of all of the backend changes on the API side. And also this way, ingesting and accessing data becomes way more democratized because you don't need your engineers with deep technical understanding to bring the data in and then to work with it afterwards. So in this video, we'll do exactly that. I will show you how you can use Databricks and Lakeflow Connect to ingest data incrementally and also in a performance optimized way from Salesforce into Databricks. And the best part is you can follow along because all of that is also available in the Databricks free edition. And in my last video, I have shown you how to set this up. Just check out the video description. All right, let's get into it. We start off in Salesforce and let's check out the data that we have here. So what I have done is I have created this free trial account on Salesforce. And then I use the Salesforce data loader program to ingest some data into this, which I can use now for this demo. I will put some instructions into the video description so you can replicate this yourself. Now, if we look into the accounts, we see here we have several accounts listed. So these are all sample accounts here. Then I have also some contact data right here, which I have ingested. And I also pointed them to the specific accounts. And I also created a couple of opportunities as well as support cases for all of the accounts to mimic like a real Salesforce environment. And now we want to get this data out of Salesforce to ingest it into Databricks, into our Lakehouse architecture to do analytics as well as AI on top, right? All right, now in Databricks, all I have to do is to go into data ingestion. And maybe first of all, let's check our catalog. So we want to ingest the data into this Salesforce catalog and into the demo schema right here, which is currently empty, right? For this, we click into data ingestion. And then you see already the first one here is Salesforce, which is already also in GA. We can click into it. And then the first thing we have to do is to create a connection to Salesforce so that Databricks knows how to properly authenticate to Salesforce to extract the data, right? And the way it works here, this will be a Unity catalog connection object afterwards that we can also govern through the Unity catalog and that we can also reuse maybe for other pipelines. So I can create the connection directly from here. I click into create connection. I call it Salesforce demo. And then it's really straightforward. I just authenticate and create a connection right here. For this, I simply put my username here and my password. And there we go. The connection was successfully created. I can also have a look into this object in the Unity catalog now. We see all of that was configured for us. And now we have this OAuth connection to Salesforce from Databricks. Now we go ahead and click on next here. And then we give our ingestion pipeline a name. This will be the pipeline, which is a Lakeflow declarative pipeline. So the previously known DLT pipeline that will then later on run to extract the data using the connection that we just created, right? And to insert the data incrementally into our delta tables. One more thing that we can do here is we can also store the event logs, right? So this connector is not hiding all of the details that happen under the hood. If we want to check some low level details and what is actually happening and also if we are debugging, if certain things do not work right away, right? We could check those event logs and here we can specify the location where we would like to store these logs. Now all we have to do is create pipeline and continue and this will now start querying our Salesforce data, 
right? It will establish the connection using the connection object that we created earlier. And in a few seconds, we will see here all of the Salesforce objects that it has identified. And then we can select which ones of them we would like to ingest into data. And there we go. We see the collection of all of the detected Salesforce objects, right? And now we can select the ones that we need. For example, in our case, we would like to ingest account. I can now specify also if I would like to include specific columns, right? Or I just want to include everything. And I can also specify how the table should be called in our target Unity catalog table. In this case, I just leave it as default. So for our small use case, we need account data. We need campaigns, contacts, campaign member opportunities, as well as cases. All right. Now we selected all of the tables that we need for our use case and we can click on next right here. And now we select our target Unity catalog destination. And as I mentioned initially, we want to ingest this data into the Salesforce catalog and inside there into the demo schema. So we select this one, we click on save and continue. And this is already the last screen right here. So here we can configure our schedule of the Lakeflow job, right? In this case, here is the default set to every six hours. So if I leave this as is every six hours, this pipeline would be executed and leverage Databricks serverless compute to ingest the latest data from Salesforce and to ingest it incrementally, right? So it's not always doing a full snapshot of all the data and overwriting everything. No, it always tries based on a couple of columns that are present within Salesforce. So things like system timestamps, create a date. There are four different columns within Salesforce that are checked one after another if they are present and can give the connector an indication if this is an incremental update or not. If none of those four typical timestamp columns is available in one of the Salesforce objects, then it cannot do it incrementally and then it will just overwrite the whole table. Now I can click on save and run pipeline and this will now kick off the Lakeflow job with the Lakeflow declarative pipeline inside to pull the data from Salesforce using our connection object and write it into our target Unity catalog destination that we have specified. So let's wait a couple of seconds and then let's check the results. And there we go. We see the pipeline was executed successfully. We see also within the graph right here that we have the account, the campaign, campaign member, case, as well as contact and opportunity. And we also see in the details how long it took and how many records were upserted here. So we see we have 500 for account, for example, and 1.5k for, for contacts. Now, if we go back to the Unity catalog and also check if the data is actually there. So we go into Salesforce, into demo, and here we already see all of those tables. So all of them are streaming tables because this is under the hood, again, running a Lakeflow declarative pipeline previously known as DLT. And now if we check the sample data, we see that the data was actually ingested. So here for campaign member, for example, for account as well, we can have a look. And here we see also the different accounts, the types of the accounts, the billing state, billing city. So all of that was ingested successfully into Databricks, into this browse table. Now we have basically loaded the initial snapshot, right? So we loaded all the data that is currently there in Salesforce into Databricks, but now we want to keep it up to date as well, right? So let's do some changes on the Salesforce side and then see how it's propagated into Databricks. Now to show you how it works, if I change something on Salesforce, let's first of all query those three tables right here. In the campaign table, we have a record with the name awareness campaign. We will delete this in a second in Salesforce and then we will see how it's propagated to Databricks. So currently you see it still exists from the initial snapshot. Then for the opportunity, we are going for an opportunity called Dataflux Expansion 543 and we will update this. Currently the stage is set to propose and we will update it to another stage and then we see how it's reflected here after executing the pipeline. And then for contact, currently we don't have a contact with the first name subscribe to my channel and we will ingest that in a second and then we will see how it will appear also right here. So let's do this. Let's start with the campaign. Go to Salesforce, search for it 
and then we will delete this one effect successfully deleted next we go into this data flex opportunity where we click on the stage and we change it from propose to negotiate for example we save it and this was also successfully applied and then for the contacts we add a new contact with the first name subscribe to my channel please and we create this one cool now we go back to our pipeline and now we re-execute this ingestion pipeline right and now it should pick up only the changes and propagate it properly into our target tables and it will overwrite the records in our target table so basically it will apply what is known as slowly changing dimensions type one right so it will not keep an additional record to historize the old values it will actually overwrite it currently this is also the only supported way in the near future there will be also slowly changing dimensions type 2 supported for the salesforce connector so that you can also historize all the changes within databricks now let's wait a few seconds and there we go the pipeline is running and applying the updates this looks already pretty good so you see we have a change in the campaign table you see we have a deleted record in a campaign table. You see also that we have for campaign member, we received 400 delete records. And this is because those are referencing the campaign table. And as we deleted the campaign, also all those campaign member records were deleted actually. And then we have one contact that was updated and one opportunity that was updated. And hopefully these are exactly the ones that we updated so let's go back to our queries. Let's start with this one with the contact with the first name subscribe to my channel. So this is the one that we just created. And now we see it appears here for the second one. We updated the stage, right? So previously it was set to prospecting. Now we updated it to negotiate. And for the campaign, this previously existed, but now it is deleted. And also the delete is properly propagated as well as all of the deletes of the campaign members cool now you have seen how easy it is to actually set this whole pipeline up how to do changes in salesforce and how those are propagated to databricks and that was already it for today's video let me know in the comments if you already ingest data from salesforce and also what you would like to see in the next videos thanks for watching see you in the next one